Hi guys, my name is Marcel and we're gonna do something different today because you're not exactly going to learn how to draw like a sir as usual. Today, you're going to learn how to paint like a sir because my god, I love watercolors. Meanwhile, it's my number one medium to color with and I've used it for pretty much everything. Portraits, landscapes, anime and manga and lots of other stuff. I just love how versatile watercolors can get. I'm not a professional by any stretch, I've only used watercolors for 9 or 10 months now, but people have been asking not only how to draw like a sir, but also how do you paint like a sir, how do you color. And today I'm going to show you my favorite medium to color with, watercolors. I'll teach you everything you need to know from the very start, but please be aware that nobody is perfect. After you've watched this video, you have to practice this yourself to get the hang out of it. Don't blame yourself if it doesn't work immediately with your first try. Also, if you liked this video, I'll make more videos about painting too. Maybe a video about digital art if you're interested. It all depends if this video is something people are willing to watch. Cause <laughs> It was a lot of work. Also, almost all of these artworks you see in today's video are in my new art book, which you can pre-order right now if you wanna. And at the end of the video, there's a little paint along where we do some painting together. And with that out of the way, we can start from the very start with our art supplies. Let's go. I hate to break it to you, but your art supplies are very important when it comes to watercolor. It's not like drawing, where you can just grab any pencil and any paper. When it comes to watercolor, your supplies decide if your art looks like this or like that. I'm going to show you what I personally like to use, but of course there are a lot of more things that you can use as well. The first thing everybody thinks of are, of course, the colors. It's incredibly important that you pick the right colors, because there are two kinds of watercolor. There's opaque watercolor, that's the cheap stuff your parents bought you for art class back in primary school, and there's aquarelle. Those are the big boy watercolors with better pigmentation, it means they are a lot more vibrant. Basically no one uses opaque watercolors. Don't get fooled by the premium quality seal. The seal is about as trustworthy as Lisa who tells me she lives in my area. Aquarelle watercolors, however, have many good brands. I found these colors for like 20 bucks and with these I painted all of my artworks, without exception. The brand of the colors is called... You know what, if you want to know which colors or what paper or brushes are used, I've linked them all at drawlikeasir.com slash material. Almost as important as the colors is the paper you're painting on. I almost dare to say it's even more important than the colors. I know, I was shocked as well. Just like with colors, there are also two kinds of watercolor paper. Cold pressed paper and hot pressed paper. However, both of them are fine, it's not like one is superior and one is not. The difference is easy. Cold pressed paper has your typical watercolor pattern or texture, meanwhile hot pressed paper is nice and smooth. And if you're not sure about what you prefer, don't worry because your wallet certainly is. Hot pressed paper can be about 4 times the price of cold pressed paper. And some artists out there even prefer the texture of less expensive cold pressed paper. Even I myself like to paint on it once in a while. I just think it looks neat. And also it's a lot cheaper. <coughs> if the texture doesn't bother you, just go ahead and grab this paper. I was forced to use the pricier hot pressed one because I made these artworks for my art book and I wanted to print completely white pages without any texture or pattern. When it comes to the thickness, I would suggest 300 grams. That's 140 LBS, by the way. Just for all of you imperial heathens out there. If that's too complicated for you, again, I linked all of the paper I use at drawlikeasir.com. And when it comes to brushes, honestly, I just bought any cheap watercolor brushes, I painted all of my artworks with them and I didn't regret it so far. Like I said, I'm not a professional by any stretch, but chances are you are not either, and I think these cheap brushes are enough to get started for any beginner out there. There's also some extras I would recommend, namely some tape, a palette and waterproof liners or ink. You'll need the tape because your paper is inevitably going to bend. That's why you need to fixate it in beforehand. 
At the very beginning, I used duct tape, which is very risky to work with. That's why I switched to lighter tape I had lying around somewhere at home. It's not as sticky and it doesn't destroy your paper. A palette is also pretty much mandatory. Watercolor has the advantage that you could basically use any color out there. You want your purple to be warmer? Well, let's just mix in some red and there you go. You don't have to buy a new marker or colored pencil. A palette's like two or three bucks, so it doesn't hurt too much. And if you are inking your drawing, you can use waterproof ink and waterproof liners. You can use whatever you like, I used liners so far and they worked great. Also, I would recommend you use two glasses of water, one for the filthy water and one for the fresh water. And, a little insider tip, you can use a masking marker, which you can use to prevent certain areas from getting wet. Don't worry, you don't need that in the beginning, I just wanted to make an honorable mention, because my bigger artworks would basically have been impossible without this. Uh, but, but where do I get a masking marker from? Again, if you have any questions about my art supplies, you can hop over to drawlikeasad.com. I think you finally understood this, so let's jump ahead to the next step. Can't you be quiet for one second? So, now that you have your art supplies, let's start learning watercolor. There's two techniques that you need to know about, wet on dry and wet on wet. With these two techniques, you can basically paint everything from landscapes to anime. That's what I just love about watercolor. You can paint any style with it. So, how do these two techniques work? I'll just compare it with this. You know how in digital art, there's a hard brush and a soft brush. Well, it's the same with watercolor. If your paper is dry, your brush makes hard strokes. That's wet on dry. And if your paper is wet, your brush makes soft strokes. That's wet on wet. So, if you keep your paper dry, you can paint with hard strokes only. Means you can paint in your typical cartoon or anime cell shading fashion. You only have to wait until every color is dry. Like I said, it only works with dry paper. Some pros color that way and I can confirm it can look a lot like Copic art if you try hard enough. If you want to paint softer things, however, like portraits, backgrounds, gradients and so on, you have to paint while your paper is still wet. Using soft color is pretty easy. In order to paint a gradient, you just wet your paper and paint on it with the two colors you like. Though I gotta admit it's a bit tricky if you've never done that before, because your paper needs to be wet the whole time, it cannot dry. So, drawing portraits can be challenging, because you have to know when your paper is too wet, when it's not wet enough, how long it's gonna be wet for, and so on. So, with watercolor, you have to plan ahead. So, typically, you paint the background first, where things are more blurry, and then you draw the foreground next. Your painting order is very important here, like I said, there's a lot of planning involved. What I'm now going to show you is considered a big disadvantage of watercolor, but also its biggest strength, in my opinion at least. It's crucial that you know this property of watercolor, because it's the most important one. Constant multiply. Again, you might recognize this from painting on a tablet, where there's a multiply mode. With this mode, your background still shines through. And it's the exact same thing with watercolor. Watercolor has a very low opacity. So even if you paint with black, the background is still gonna shine through. This means you cannot just paint everything over an already existing background. Because watercolor has very low opacity. This is only gonna work with darker colors. That's why I compared it to the multiply mode, because it works the exact same. So, like I mentioned, you need to plan out your artwork first, and then you can start painting. So no, I can't just, for example, paint some green highlights on here, because, well, it only gets darker. I can't make some brighter highlights with something that has such a low opacity. Maybe you now think that this is a reason not to get into watercolor, but what if I'm telling you that this is its biggest strength? You know what? I'll just show you. Let's just say Pep is sitting in a red environment. 
Of course, he would need a red shadow, right? You cannot just use a red colored pencil because it's too opaque, its opacity is too high. But if you use watercolor instead, it immediately looks like a natural shadow. As you can see, having colored shadows is incredibly immersive. Just look at this. This was one of the very first watercolor artworks that I ever made. Once I realized how powerful colored shadows are, I immediately started using it in every artwork I made. How lame would this artwork look if it would have gray shadows? It's so much more immersive with colored shadows. Same goes for landscapes, of course. I only used blue shadows for the entirety of this artwork, and it shows. Shading with watercolors is so easy, you only need to paint over it. If you want to know more about colored shadows and how to use them, I made a color theory video on my German channel. If you show me that you're interested in coloring, I'll translate this and upload it here on my English channel as well. So if you don't want to miss this video when I upload it, just go ahead and subscribe. You saw how powerful colored shadows could be and you can shade with any color out there, because you can make any color out there. And even better, you can shade over multiple objects at once. Look at how I'm coloring a face and hair at the same time here. You don't need multiple colors or pens for that, just one brush and the color. I think you can now understand why this is watercolor's biggest strength. Because you can also just combine these colored shadows with the previously mentioned wet on wet technique. This results in soft colored shadows. That's how I painted this shirt, for example. I painted the shadows soft with wet on wet and also I colored the shadows green. This gives it a natural 3D look, just like with a real shirt. If you like these kinds of artworks, I made many more of them and you can find them on my social media or in my art book. Anyways, this was a lot of theory now, so let's get practical. Now picture this. You're someone who colors with markers and instead of a warm green, you want to use a colder shade of green. Well, then you'd need to get out and buy it first. But with watercolors, you can just throw in a bit more blue and boom, you have a cooler shade of green. But beware, if you don't know what you're doing, your colors can get muddy very fast. In general, I'd recommend you always have an extra sheet of paper with you, so you can test out your colors first before ruining your artwork. That's pretty much the first thing I did when I started out with watercolors last year. But let's get down to the root of trouble and prevent your colors from getting muddy in the first place. First thing you need to know, any color has a warm and a cool shade. I know, that's a very basic way of putting it, but I want to keep this explanation as beginner friendly as possible. So, let's say you want to mix some green color. Then you would need a cold yellow and a cold blue, since they are both right next to it. So in order to mix a color, you always need the ones that are right next to them. Let's put this to the test. Just as I claimed, mixing a cool yellow and a cool blue makes a nice, vibrant green. But if you take the warmer shade of blue that's further away in the color wheel, well, then you get mud. That's why I recommend a bigger watercolor set just like mine, since it has a warm and a cool shade of every color. Also, as a little disclaimer, I'm not saying mud is useless. If you want to paint duller pictures, this might be right up your alley. You can get mud by just mixing together any complementary colors. We've only scratched the surface when it comes to color mixing here. You could make a whole video about this. But I think you know the most important thing to avoid mixing muddy colors now. So let's jump to the next step. So, right before we paint something together, I have a little do or don't checklist that might help you in the future. Let's go! Avoid sketching your motive directly on paper. Small motives are okay, but watercolor paper isn't made for sketching and especially not for erasing on it. Use a softer eraser or just do it like me and sketch your drawing out on a separate sheet. And then trace it on your watercolor paper later on. Wasting expensive paper can get very frustrating, you may want to avoid that. Watercolor fades over time. If you thought, I don't know what this Marcel guy is talking about, my watercolor isn't transparent at all, well, yeah, just wait until it dries. At the beginning, you always tend to underestimate how much watercolor can fade, so you need to apply another layer. And that's okay, you'll get the hang out of it eventually. 
you can undo watercolor to a certain extent. Mistakes happen to me quite often, even during live streams, so I was able to save my artworks. But it doesn't work completely flawlessly, this method often leaves some stains behind. Don't overdo it with applying your water, having puddles makes your color swim in it. And believe me, this isn't exactly what you want. This way the water isn't even touching the paper, but you want your water to spread over the paper from the very get-go. Maybe you used watercolors before and you asked yourself why there are some stains on your art. I feel you on this, I had the same problem. If you're wetting just a random area, this is sadly going to leave a stain behind. That's why I'm always trying to carefully wet complete areas. That way there's still gonna be a stain, but since the stain is right on the outline, nobody's gonna notice it. This isn't a tip, just a heads up, some colors granulate. So they don't look nice and clean, but more grainy. Don't worry, you're not at fault here, it's just the way the color is. Some colors just granulate and some don't. My last recommendation is mixed media. You can paint some details with a small brush, yes, but nothing out there beats colored pencils. It's incredible how much better this looks. I never regretted using them even once. This was basically everything I had to say for the beginning, so let's paint out our first little artwork together. When I started out with watercolors, I watched a lot of videos about it, but something I always missed in these videos was someone who took me at my hand and guided me a bit. So that's why I'm including this part in this video as well. We're gonna paint three artworks. The first one is the easiest one, simple cell shading in wet on dry. Then let's try a more natural look in wet on wet. And if you have this down, let's paint a landscape together. For the sake of this practice, I'm going to draw a simple motive, but you don't have to, because you can download my drawing at drawlikeasur.com slash watercolor motive. You know, in case you want to paint along with the same motive. And you know how things on my channel work, in exchange for this artwork you can leave a like. I think that would be a fair exchange. So I'm done drawing my artwork and you printed out yours, the next step is to copy it on watercolor paper. I have a lighting table for that. But that's just for convenience. You can also use a window and both of your arms for the same result. First things first, fixate the paper so it doesn't bend later on. Your first test is gonna be color mixing. For painting pep, you'll need these colors on screen right now. Use more water for lighter colors and use less water for stronger, more saturated colors. Also, a little disclaimer, if you use hot pressed paper, you should apply one wash of clear water to prepare the paper. If you don't, then your color might not be sticking to the paper. I experienced this once and I, well, I wasn't quite happy about it, to be honest. You don't have to do this if you use cold pressed paper, by the way, this only goes for hot pressed paper. Anyway, enough preparations for now, we'll continue with a dry or dried paper. Also, if you want to, you can outline your drawing, but that's purely optional. Well, let's go then. Don't worry, it's easier than it looks. You now apply the first layer of color. It's also called a wash. Don't hesitate to use a lot of water to spread around. It's a big area after all. After this wash, you can let your motive dry or you can make it dry by using a hairdryer. And this way you apply all the colors. But always keep in mind that your color needs to dry every time you've used it. Here's what happens when you don't wait for the color to dry. They start blending into one another. I'm done with the base colors, so let's start shading. I'm using red, but I'm going to make it a bit darker with a bit of purple. You don't have to watch out for anything here. Like I said, watercolor has its constant multiply mode. So you can shade over anything with just one color. This is purely optional, but you can also highlight your painting with a gel pen or some gouache. And we're done! This was our first artwork. And if you're posting your result on social media, don't hesitate to tag me in it. Well, let's continue with our next motive. So back to the start, I've prepared everything just like I did before. Let's paint wet on wet here, this makes for a more natural look. This is gonna be a tad more tricky, I recommend you watch this part first. Then you can rewind and then you can paint along. 
Also, you can reduce the video speed if that helps you. I refrain from using outlines here, this looks more natural with just a light sketch. I'm gonna show you how we're painting wet on wet by showcasing it on Pep's wing. First, I'll wet the complete wing so there won't be any stains. In this wet area, I'll add the main color, which is of course purple. And then I'll add an accent color. I chose a light blue because that has a nice natural look to it. Let this part dry and then it's rinse and repeat for the rest. I know all of this might be a bit tricky if this is your first try, but that's why we practice it with a simple motive first. And just like with the first motive, I'm mixing a shadow color. This time I'll shade with a blue color. And again, I'll make it a bit darker by adding purple. Again, you can add details like highlights and since the blue accent color reminds me of a blue sky, why not add some grass? And this was our first artwork made wet in wet. Bravo, if you made it until here, let's put your skills to the test one last time and combine wet on wet and wet on dry by painting a simple landscape. For this, I pencil in a tree very lightly and very carefully so I don't ruin the paper. We start out by completely wetting the paper, because we paint the background first. And since the background is more blurry, it needs to be painted wet on wet. First thing I paint with this is a light blue. Like I said before, watercolor is very transparent, so the background needs to have light colors, so we can overpaint it later. While the paper is still wet, we can paint in some trees in the background. Maybe even some grass and a small river. A soft background needs soft shadows, so let's apply some darker greens. Since the paper is still wet, the shadows will be soft and blurry as well. Never shade with black though, use some different shades of green to make the scenery more colorful. And then let your artwork dry. Now we can tackle the foreground. First up, let's paint the tree I penciled in earlier so we can get a sense of scale here. And then let it dry because we're done with brown now. Now we can add the leaves to this tree. Get creative and use different shades of green while the color is still wet. Don't hesitate to make your artwork more colorful. And then you can start shading if everything's dry again. If you now want to shade with darker colors, use less water and more color. To finish this artwork off, we can add a cliff by making the bottom area wet. And then add some grass to this area. I know I should have painted this cliff from the very start, but I thought doing this artwork one step at a time could be a bit more helpful to beginners. And if everything's dry again, one last time, let's shade this artwork. Add some darker grass in the foreground, add some darker trees in the background, and this was level number three. I hope this was helpful to you. Just like I promised, I'll upload my color theory video very soon if I see that you guys are interested in coloring. And in the meantime, you can watch this video right here. I made a tutorial all about shading. This could be a very helpful video to you. Thank you all so much for sticking around so long. Scripting this video took two full days. It was my entire weekend and all of the animation and filming was also very time consuming. So, I'm very thankful if you supported this video by either liking or commenting or joining my Patreon if you want to go the extra month. My name's Marcel and I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.